I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and let's say you don't like Sense, you don't like TouchWiz, you don't like Motorola's user interface, a great device for you. Could be the LG Nexus 4. It's branded as the Google Nexus 4. It's the latest iteration in the Nexus line of devices, and it's packing some pretty killer specifications as well. It's got a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor, a 4.7-inch IPS HD display, an 8-megapixel camera, Android 4.2, and more. Is this the Android device for you, considering that it's only 300 bucks? Out of the box, full retail, no contract, or should you go with the Note 2 or the Droid DNA or the One X Plus? We'll find out in the four of you, but first, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like the Nexus 4, devices very similar to this, for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you walk out working, they'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts and settings and more. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. Let's get up and personal with the LG Nexus 4. It's a four of you, and it starts right now. If you're wowed by stock Android and you're even more wowed by a killer price point, the LG Nexus 4, also known as the Google Nexus 4, could be the ultimate Android device for you. This is available if you can get your hands on it from Google Play. 8 gigabyte version is $299, 16 gigabyte version is $349.99. Now the great thing about this device, those are unsubsidized prices and that means it's full retail. That's what you're paying. You're not signing a two-year agreement. So you look at like the Note 2, for example, $650, bucks, give or take, on your carrier, you know, other devices. 549 599 full retail starting at 300 for a device that's really well specced all around. It's got a stock Android, so if that's your thing, you can take advantage of that as well. It's a Nexus device, but you know, Google's kind of doing an interesting thing with the Nexus program right now. Not only is it intended for developers, you know, you hear Nexus and you think like rooting your device, hacking your device for those people that really just want to tweak and modify their device. It, you know, in some ways, they're marketing towards consumers now as well, though I will argue until the end of time, stock Android is not the ideal consumer solution. I would recommend a Sense device, a TouchWiz device, or perhaps even a Motorola device way before I'd recommend stock Android for the mainstream consumer. That said, and the reason why I recommend that is because of the value add that you get in the software. Sense, TouchWiz, and to a lesser extent, Motorola's UI pack cool software features that just aren't available in stock Android. So it's like they've taken stock Android and moved along with it and created some better features you don't see in the stock version. That said, that aside, you're packing some pretty good specs here. 1.5 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro CPU, so quad-core processing power, a 4.7-inch IPS HD display, an 8-megapixel camera with 1080p HD recording. In the back, you've got 2 gigabytes of RAM, or I shouldn't say in the back, but you've got 2 gigabytes of RAM on this device, and then you have uh, battery as well, 2,100 milliamp hour battery, 4.9 ounces in terms of weight, and it packs Android 4.2, also known as Jelly Bean on this device. So stock Jelly Bean here, the, the new Jelly Bean, I call it the new jellies. New Jelly, are you jelly? I hate when people say that, but I've heard it on the internet, so it must be cool. That said, the uh, here's the device, and it's packing stock Android, so for a lot of people that are you know Android purists, they're really going to enjoy this because it takes away and strips down all of the notification stuff, as you can see here, and you've got... Google stuff, calendar, camera, Chrome, you'll notice there's no stock browser, Chrome is the browser, currents, you've got news and weather, people, phone, playbooks, magazines, movies, and TV, you've got Twitter, you got speed test, and more, so you can see some stuff that I've installed, then you can obviously see the Google integration, but no carrier installed bloatware on this device, you've got Google Wallet, which is nice, out of the box, and then Android 4.2. So you'll notice a couple of changes right out of the gate with Android 4.2. First of all, a slightly revised notifications bar where you can not only clear your notifications as you see fit, but you can also flip it around and get easy access to popular toggles, brightness, settings, Wi-Fi, T-Mobile, of course the network identifying information, the battery life, airplane mode, Bluetooth mode, and more. But let's talk about the build really quickly here. You've got on-screen buttons, back, home, and recent applications. Again, stock Android through and through here. Power button on the right side. Micro USB charging port at the bottom, volume rocker over on the side with a micro SIM card slot which has to be removed with a special tool which comes in the box, and then you've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now what's really impressive about this device is a couple things. One, the price point, and heck, that would be an impressive price point even if this thing were plastic. I mean, this has a really nice feel to it. It really feels good. It feels nice to the hand. Glass all around. Got the Nexus logo on the back with LG. It really is a good looking device, and you think, I paid $299 for that and got this. It's really impressive all around. But back to what I was saying about the notifications bar, a couple of cool settings here. You can press and hold and easily access with your two fingers the quick settings or I can scroll down and just access my normal notifications bar with my network ID. Now, this accepts AT&T and T-Mobile SIM cards, although unfortunately there's no LTE capabilities in the Nexus 4. Unless you live in Canada and you, you tweak it around, et cetera, et cetera. Not available in the U.S. or in other countries uh, that don't have that particular type of LTE 
that it has. Long story there, take a look on the internet if you want to see the full story there. I won't spend time to review covering that because it's a feature that it technically does not have. That said, let's take a look at Chrome here. PhoneDog.com is already loaded up. Really impressed with Google Chrome, but again, Stock Android, just really fluid performance all around. Portrait to landscape transitions. It transitions easily. The overall speed of the browser is fast, and you can really see that quad-core processor doing its magic all around. Then you've got your browser settings here, back and forward buttons, of course, desktop site, and then you have your tabs also. And I'm a big fan of the transition effects here, so I can load up CNN just for example and move through my different tabs, and I like the little transition effects you see there, how the tabs themselves are kind of moving as you scroll back and forth, and then CNN is right there, and then Phone Dog is right there as well. And of course, in landscape mode, 4.7 inch display, you don't lose the on-screen button, so you do lose a little bit of screen real estate as you're transitioning over. That said, 4.7 inches is gonna be a nice balance for a lot of people. It's still pocketable, it still fits in the hand, and you can still stretch your hand if you have big hands like I do all the way across the actual device. Let's take a look at text messaging as well. It comes with a new keyboard, Android 4.2 keyboard out of the box, and it's got some cool features. First of all, we'll do the quick brown fox. It's ready to party. But then you know what, let's say the Quick Brown Fox is so candid, he loves to party so much that he gets crazy with his typing and wants to go into like a swipe-like functionality. Well, Android 4.2 keyboard out of the box has that ability to do that. So doing, for example, hey there. So swipes your thing, you got the ability to do that on the Android keyboard out of the box. Now there are plenty of different alternatives on Google Play, a bunch of different keyboards, Swift Key and more. If that's something that interests you, you can download those from Google Play online, anywhere from free all the way up to paid version, depending on which keyboard you go with, but no branding whatsoever outside of the Nexus and LG, so really an all-around kind of stock device here, and the first Nexus device made by LG. Keyboard fits really nicely on the device, or I should say it really feels nice, then of course landscape mode, granted, yeah, you do have the on-screen buttons, but you still get a decent, nice, a decent sized rather landscape keyboard here on this device. Let's talk also about the Google Play Store. Speaking of, I'm going, actually, you know what, I'll show you, I'll show you Gmail. This is some pretty cool features. The new Gmail features are available in Android 4.2, one of my favorites. Swipe to archive, really a useful one right, right there. And I can go into a message, for example, let's go into this one, and let's see what we can do. Show pictures. And you can see all the typical settings here with my mark on red, and then change labels, I can delete, and more. So really what I'm you know, kind of focusing on here is the price point, $299.99, really a well-constructed device all around, and so again, for 300 bucks full retail, this is the 16 gigabyte version. The only downside, there's no uh, expandable storage. Once you get to 16 gigabytes or eight gigabytes, depending on your model, you're kind of stuck. Can't really go anywhere past that, so that's something to keep in mind in terms of a size. Be sure you go with the size you think you're gonna use over the course of two years if you're gonna keep this device for a full two years. But again, stock Android through and through, and just to show you some of the changes in Android 4.2, or just kind of some of the changes in general between stock Android, if you haven't seen it in a while, and then of course an overlay, you can see, for example, accounts. This is something we saw in Android 4.1, but it groups the accounts by actual account type. So for example, if I click on Google and I had more than one Google account, all of my Google accounts would show up right here, as opposed to having separate Google, 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 say that three times fast, all the way down to the bottom. You got your Google, then you got your Twitter accounts as well, and you can see phone doc underscore Aaron and my personal account, Aaron C. Baker, both loaded there. So again, organized right there in with both as opposed to actually having separate Twitter, you know, phone doc underscore Aaron and then Aaron C. Baker. So that's something to uh, that I find particularly useful and from an organizational perspective is pretty cool. The only thing I don't like, or I guess there are a few things I don't like about stock Android, but one of the things I don't like about stock Android, there's no percentage indicator. I would love to be able to look at the battery meter up here and say, you know what, I'd like a percentage indicator where I know that that's 91% or that's 97%. And yes, with Android 4.2, they made it a little bit easier. I can just take my two fingers and swipe and see 95%. In my opinion, that's one step too many. I should be able to have a battery percentage right there in the main area, right beside the battery indicator in the top right-hand corner where I can see, okay, 95%, just like I do on some of Samsung's devices and just like I do on LG's devices with their custom skin with LG's user interface, things like that. I think that'd be a great feature to stock Android. I'm honestly surprised they haven't implemented that yet. Pretty much a shock, actually. I'm noticing that this wallpaper is causing the camera to have all kinds of focus issues, so my apologies for that. Really would like to see that. And then, of course, like I said, Android 4.2, I think you know some of the value adds you get in touch with and sense really make it beneficial to, uh, to go with one. If you're looking for additional software features, S-Beam, you're looking for uh, some of the uh, HTC Sense features that you like, or perhaps you care for the user interface. I think they're really well fleshed out, particularly in today's world. They work really well with Android 4.1 and 4.2. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for part two of the LG Nexus 4 review. Made by Google, Android 4.2. 
It's the device to go with if you want stock Android. Stay tuned for the full video review. Part 2 is coming right up.